On the other hand, we might know the acceleration of the thing that we're trying to track. For instance, if the acceleration with time followed a function like this, and we knew the analytic function, we could integrate the acceleration over time to get the velocity. And we could integrate the velocity over time to get the position. And again, if we knew this analytically and we were good at calculus, we could do this with a pencil and paper. But in practical situations, we don't have a pencil and paper function for the acceleration. It's going to be something that we measure at different points in time. So we can estimate the velocity as being whatever the velocity was plus some value of the acceleration times delta t. And we can estimate the position as whatever the position was plus some value of velocity times delta t as we go forward in time. So let's try that out. If we can read from our analog input port something, say, from an accelerometer that tells us what the acceleration is at this point in time, and we can get from the micros function what the time is in microseconds at that time, and we know because we started out not moving, perhaps, that V1 equals zero, and that P1 equals zero. We knew where we were. Then we can integrate that forward in time. So if we go to our next data point, we want to integrate under that whole curve for the acceleration. We'll measure A2 and T2, we can approximate V2, well it'll be whatever velocity we were going at time 1, plus some acceleration, well we know it's somewhere between that acceleration and that acceleration, so maybe best just take an average. So A1 plus A2 over 2, times delta t would be t2 minus t1. There's an estimate of the velocity. And we can get an estimate of the position at 2 as just the position at 1 plus, well, the average would be the best bet for the velocity, v2 and v1. So v1 plus v2 over 2 gives us an average of the velocity times t2 minus t1. So with better numerical methods we could make a higher order estimate. This estimate that we're making here is basically just saying we'll draw a line across there, that's like trapezoidal rule, and we'll count that area under that triangle there. So this area in here is something that we're missing and that's giving us an error in our estimate. And next we might go on and say that here's a second location, A2, or A3 rather, a third location, and we can find out what the time is at T3. We can calculate an estimate for V3. Let's make all of these approximation signs because we know we're just guessing. We're trying to get close. V3 will be whatever the velocity was at time 2 plus some average acceleration between points 2 and 3. So A2 plus A3 divided by 2 times the difference in time between those two times. So T3 minus T2. And then we can also get position <clears throat> at 3 estimated as whatever the position was at 2 plus the velocity at 2 plus the velocity at 3 divided by 2, some average of the velocity times delta t, t3 minus t2. And we can repeat that over here with A4 and T4, 
and so on down the line. Now every time we do this, we're estimating the area under the curve with this crude estimate and we're getting an error here when we don't get our estimate right. But again, if we push those close enough together, we could get pretty good estimate of the area under the curve. We've only got to worry about the same thing we did with the differentiation. These time steps might get a little too short, but these are always going to be fairly substantial numbers, so we should get a little better behavior than we get with the differentiation. And let's try it with a programming example. 